Board, School Board welcomes public comment. According to Policy 903, we remind everyone of the following. Public comment shall be limited to three minutes unless otherwise specified by the Board. Participants must be recognized by the presiding officer and note their name and municipality. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer rather than to individual board members, district employees, or members of the public. A speaker may speak once during each comment period. Please note that these sessions are designated for comments. To protect the confidentiality and privacy rights of all members of our community, the board encourages members of the public to direct any comments regarding particular individuals, such as students or district employees, privately to the superintendent or other appropriate administrators or board members, or to communicate with the board and superintendent privately by sending an email to psdschoolboard at penridge.org. Questions raised and not addressed may be followed up at a later time. No one signed up. You're the only member of the public. So there's no public comment. We'll just go to our first agenda item, which is the Being a Writer Grade 6 Thank program. You. Okay. Um, I think you're all familiar, at least in terms of where we've been for the past few years, with our elementary um, writing program, Being a Writer, and now with our elementary uh, and our reading program that we are positing at the elementary. Um, when we saw the success of being a writer in the elementary, um, last year we decided to do a pilot in sixth grade because the program itself is actually a K-6 program in a whole. Um, and we were also in a situation where we're looking to make some changes to the curriculum and the program in sixth grade and also you know, writing something we really want to focus on. So things kind of fell into place really well because a team of Reading specialists and elementary teachers, along with uh, Stephanie Washington, put a lot of work and time and energy into selecting the Being a Writer program for K-5, and it just became a real, a real natural fit for us to go ahead and pilot it. And we've had a good run of piloting it this year with um, six different teachers in all three middle schools. Um, we met in late fall to talk to uh, the middle school principals, along with those teachers. We also spent some time, I also spent some time with teachers and the uh, Center for Collaborative Learning, the uh, purveyor of this program. Uh, we spent some time doing some virtual uh, training and discussing and collaborating and things like that. The teachers have also spent some time um, working with the Center for Collaborative Learning on what they call a lesson study, where the center comes in and they do a lesson in a classroom. And, uh, the teachers are part of the, uh, are the students, but they're certainly in the room to observe this, and then they go into another room and they, they process it and learn about what went on. So um, that's why we are proposing that we move this uh, in its entirety into sixth grade for our language arts classrooms. As you might know, in sixth grade we have reading classes and we also have language arts classes. Uh, classes. Language arts would focus on more of the, uh, the writing end of things and reading, certainly on the reading skills and strategies. But of course, in both classrooms, we expect that there would be some reading and writing going on as appropriate for those subject areas. Um, so we're hoping to do that for next year. Uh, there are a couple, and I know you can see the, I'm moving my screen as if it's going to be on the screen. Um, you can see there's a couple different uh, variables on there. Or I'm sorry, a couple different items on there. It talks about the writing goals, um, how it serves the 21st century goals that we're looking at as a district. Uh, and also addresses uh, varying abilities. There's a lot of great conversations going on in sixth grade, because as you can imagine, sixth grade classrooms and scheduling configurations and teacher assignments look different than they do in the elementary schools. And there's been some great discussions, because what it's forcing us to do is to really take a look across the board at our real programming, uh, and not only uh, writing, but also in reading, and how we can make sure that they're aligned, that they're communicating with each other. Uh, and then ultimately, um, we're, we're looking forward to seeing students come up through third, fourth, fifth, and then into sixth grade with this continuity of language, this continuity of program, uh, and really get all those teachers talking together. And then also, as we move into looking at curriculum revision in seventh and eighth grade, certainly uh, the best parts of the program we can certainly carry over in terms of uh, strategies and language and, uh, and methodologies. Um, one thing I didn't include on there, program 
outline is the, the scope and sequence, and I'll apologize, it is a big PDF document now. So it's, I tried to cut it up, but every time you pasted it on something else, it didn't quite work out. But if you open that up and you use your, your fingers and you, open, you just uh, take a look at it, you can look closer at some of the various units, whether it's narrative writing or expository writing. Um, we'll just mention that actually page two and three are being a writer, page one is making meaning. But it's actually good to get a sense of what goes on in making meaning as well and how the programs can align. At this point, I haven't had any discussions about making meaning in sixth grade, but we certainly want to move forward with being a writer in sixth grade. Um, and you can see down the bottom there the cost numbers. small caveats, which I hope to be good caveats, is that at this point, we really don't know the exact number of teachers because we haven't gone through the scheduling process yet, we haven't gone through the recommendation process yet, and we've asked the middle school uh, principals to take a good look at the schedule and make sure we do the best we can to get, uh, you know, configure things well to have some teachers teaching multiple sections. Also, uh, on the professional development costs, we were kind of going back and forth a little bit with some of the lab and learning and some of those costs. Um, so I, I, I certainly wouldn't guarantee it, but I do believe these costs may come in a little lower than they listed. Are you questions? I, I do. I have a couple things that I just really appreciate, but I also have a couple questions. I'm looking at the scope and sequence, yes. and I just really appreciate the level of detail in terms of one of the things that I think we look for on a, on a scope and sequence is just if you were a brand new teacher through this course, would this document be enough to get you started in terms of the overview and then your colleagues and all the, the supplies and things like that? So I love the left-hand side in terms of you know the writing focus, the skill focus, as well as the independent practice focus and, and that piece. The, and the fact that as you planned over, if you look at the length, they only they don't plan for a full school year on purpose, yes. right? So they plan for about 30 weeks, and I think that's a pretty sound strategy in terms of assessments and days missed, as well as teachable moments. Poetry might take two and a half weeks instead of two. Um, to be able to have that play there, I think is really, really powerful. The question I have is about texts. And so you list a lot of texts under all of those. Are some of them required and some of them optional? Are they yes. all optional within the yeah. program? Is there and a way to see. denote the ones so that we know like common sixth grade experiences across all three middle schools versus the teacher has some play, which is I think pretty common for your curriculum. Right, when the teachers get together and talk through this, the next opportunity they're gonna have for this, probably on the 28th, is on our uh, professional development and collaboration day. They're gonna talk through that probably so and, and have those conversations what worked, what didn't work, what we're planning going forward, because we're obviously going to be about to have way more. But there are, there is room in there. If you look at the, for instance, in the writing community in the first unit, um, there are a couple different um, uh, selections that are basically about an author. So what they do is they, um, they they look into the life of an author and what an author does. And they might have a couple different ones um, uh, to look at their craft, to look at some of the works they've done. So they would have a different, you know, they'd be able to select one or the other depending on their audience and what, maybe what didn't work last year. Um, they can also talk to fifth grade because fifth grade is in full swing now. The entire fifth grade is doing this. Fifth grade will have a lot of great information for our sixth grade teachers in terms of what work we did. You spoke about the 30 weeks, which sounds, wow, there's so much room in there. But when you take 30 weeks in the school year, there are so many things that we can't there are so many, whether we have snow day or not, you know, whether the news station announces this right away or not, but either way, things happen that we can't predict. The other piece of this program is, is that the Being a Writer program is designed for just a little bit more of class, more class time than we have in the middle schools. Um, so that gives us that flexibility to fit that in. We also look at, and, and I guess one differentiation I'd like to make is that a program is not necessarily a curriculum. It provides curriculum, it provides resources, it provides lots of resources for our teachers. Um, 
but it's not necessarily our entire curriculum. So there is also room in there for us to customize and us to put uh, pieces in there that maybe after a year or two we're gonna say, you know what, I think we still need to do this, so let's take the time to put that together. Or maybe we want to look at emphasizing poetry in a different way in fifth grade than we do in sixth grade. So there's, there's a lot of room there, especially with that, that vertical alignment and that continuity is something we've re never really had before, especially going from elementary to middle school. So we're, we're, we're pretty excited about that because those conversations are, are really, I think, are really beneficial to everybody. And if I could just comment, on the conversations with sixth grade teachers who are currently piloting this, their enthusiasm mirrors the enthusiasm of the elementary teachers. They're seeing what we see at the elementary school value of teaching the writer. They're working out the logistics, as Mr. Tupukli was talking about, in terms of other 44 minute classes and 60 minute classes, and how does that work? And there's some flexibility in there. But in terms of the resources that we have in the mentor text, there is flexibility within that, if that was your original question. Um, because you don't, uh, that's really one of the beauty of, another beauty of that program. The mentor text are rich. They really are, and in some cases, teachers have, you know, a difficult time choosing which one because they're all so good. But you can, you can interchange those depending on which ones are defined for the skill development attached to that process. So we have all these these, these great materials for kids, uh, the mentor text, the experiences, the building a writing community, the continuity, and then on the, the teacher side of it, we have uh, professional development. Now, professional development actually comes in, in five ways. One of the ways is, is, is from ourselves, and that is from those conversations that I talked about between fifth and sixth grade teachers, because I don't think we ever want to look, uh, we, we want to disregard that as it being valuable professional development, because it is, because that's the program happening in Penridge. It's not just the program in and of itself. Um, the uh, CCL Learning uh, website, the Learning Hub, has uh, a great deal of materials and resources for teachers to utilize. Um, there are also uh, video tutorials, some that we mandate that teachers walk through and take a little look through. So it, it, sometimes they're as simple as they just want to take you through the materials because the amount of materials you receive as resources are pretty, you know, can be overwhelming if someone doesn't take you to take you through and say, hey, uh, here's, here's what's going on, here's what you really need to focus on, here's what you can worry about later. Um, and then, of course, there is um, we provide virtual training. So we'll sit there like this and we'll, we'll say hello to someone who sees the CCL up there. The teachers will interact with that person and uh, go through the materials and, and, and plan in that way. Um, we actually, when we sat down with the representative back in October, we actually, she made us right. We sat there and we wrote about uh, a, moment, a moment in our lives and then just we did exactly what we would expect kids to do. And one of the moments of this writing and any good writing instruction is writing alongside your students, and I think that's that's a really it's a really fun and cool experience for our teachers and of course for our students. And then finally, there's the face-to-face -face time. We would like to see the you know we'd like to bring them in possibly um, in June or April, um, depending on when we figure out what the, the best day and time would be for them to come in and face-to-face -face with our sixth grade teachers. Uh, and again, they will also provide. In the fall, once we get rolling, the lesson study will help come in, stand in front of a classroom, model a couple things. Teachers can watch, and then they all get together, and we all process it together. Um, and I think that's just the, that kind of sums up all the variations of professional, professional development that are a part of this. <coughs> for this school year for program improvement. <clears throat> Do you guys think you have any questions that you're thinking of about the field of being a writer? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you've already, yeah. I, I've already <laughs> beat, I've already beat this one to death on the lawn floor of the kids. <laughs> so. I asked the question with this <laughs> So then it will move forward to that board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So um, if I could just ask before we move to the next agenda item, because
because I think that Mr. Jacoby was making a really good point in terms of professional development. And he's talking about all those components that we have seen successful at the elementary level. The one, I think, key piece of the professional development that we have seen most success, and, and uh, you know, Center for Collaborative Learning has been wonderful, but have been our own teachers. So when we train, we went through that first year of just West Rock Hill teachers going through this professional development and learning that program, and now being able to do the turnkey training with our other teachers, that is a very um, successful professional development model. So that brings me to, to a discussion that I think that we should probably have, because at the last meeting we talked about the reading program at the elementary, and why we do not recommend moving full-blown all seven schools next year. And we, that is a really important question. It's a powerful question, and we have had a really serious conversation about it. And one of the reasons why we are very reluctant to do that and still continue to recommend the model that we have in terms of providing the professional development, pro providing the whole pilot, and using that next to the next year for two schools is because it gives us the additional staff to do the turnkey training that we have already seen as a successful model. We currently do not have the internal capacity to be able to provide what we provided to West Rock Hill teachers for that to be a successful implementation. It does, it does require that we have teachers with someone who's modeling these, and, the, and, and they do, the company does come out. And the reading specialist can support the teachers. But the, the degree that we would need that for seven schools is larger than that. And our recommendation really is dependent on those successful factors that we have already seen in place. So while nothing would make me personally happier than everybody getting it next year, I think I've said that many times, if we could do that, we would. We do not have the internal so um, I, I, I totally agree. I don't like throwing out a lot of curriculum at the same time and get overloaded people. But we had Sellersville Elementary this year who took on being a writer and the reading program all at the same time. And what we're talking about is they all, you know, all the, the other five schools. So, so, so two of them now don't really need as much additional, so are going to need as much additional support because they've already started to roll out those programs. So it's the other five elementary schools that we would be talking about. And next year, they already had the being a writer this year. So next year would be a second year of being a writer. Couldn't we just wrote flip-flop next year and the following year so that they get the reading program next year and the second year of you know improving the being a writer the following year because they're already implementing it this year. And next year gives them another year of practice but we've already seen that the reading program is not doing our kids any good. And it, it just, I, I don't like the idea of waiting two more years until five of our schools are exposed to it. And this would at least give them exposure to both of those programs next year, and then still continuing the extra professional development the following year, so there's my pitch. Um, <laughs> You're good. Because then, you know, I, I just, I worry that by the time they get to middle school, the two elementary schools that have had this program are going to be on a completely different level than the kids who haven't. Uh, especially when you think about the kids who are in the upper end of the elementary grades right now because they may transition without ever having any of the being a writer, or well, not being a writer, but the reading program. Um, and so I'm just wondering, it's still gonna take you the same amount of support whether you're, you know, because you're going to be doing that, you're going to be doing those things the next two years. So couldn't you just flip flop them, right? Because you're you're essentially you're still doing less than what Sellersville is doing altogether right now, and less than what West Rock Hill did. Because West Rock Hill did the being a writer, and then the next year did the reading program, and so I assume you're going to be doing more of the being a writer because they didn't get two years of that implementation first. So providing that extra support afterwards, plus. I think the Sellersville teachers were saying how those two went hand in hand, and it was actually, they thought it was easier to do them together than to piecemeal it, because then they're going to be changing things. They're going to have to change things again when they're trying to pull the reading program in. 
and they already have to pick apart Reading Street because it doesn't cover all of the information that they need to cover before PSSAs, so it's not even being used the way it's intended to be used anyway. So most of the things that you said are absolutely true. Not every teacher at either of those schools is using Mickey and Minnie this year. <clears throat> so it's three teachers in one building, three teachers in the other, so okay. it's alternate grade level. So, and then they have the uh, reading specialist at Sellersville, who's a guru in the program, who's supporting them right now. The end goal, so I'll do, I'll do the reminder of what we're trying to accomplish at the elementary level is the best, oh, I'm sorry, I'm really, I've been suffering with bronchitis and I have a scratchy bit. Anyway, <clears throat> is a balanced literacy approach. What we want to do, and we talked about this uh, at the last meeting, is the two schools to have all the programs, so words their way, which is the fifth component of all of this, that's all of those programs, all at once for the two schools. So the two schools get those supports to get all the kinks out to make sure this is a well-oiled machine so that we move all of that to the other five schools, right, already going through the pitfalls of first year implementation with the supports that we are capable of giving to the two schools. It, in our estimation, it benefits the teachers and ultimately the students by providing the successful plan for the implementation for the next five schools, rather than getting words their way, trying to push that all five in all seven schools, that we really do not have all the supports to get to every building to do the side-by-side -side coaching and mentoring to make that a successful program. But aren't you doing that, aren't you doing that the following year anyway? We're going to have two schools with all those teachers who've already been trained to help us support them. That's really the beauty of the original pilot that we saw work. But I thought they already are trained. No, no everyone in the two schools next year will have all five components. Now we're going to have... A pilot in the next year. Yes, it's and now... Thank you. And they will be our support system as West Rockville teachers were for being a writer. We have seen that successful, honestly. Again, I, I, I understand what you're saying, I do. Some students won't get that. You know, Reading Street is, is, a, is a reading program, so students are still being taught. We know what were the missing links there, and that's what we're trying to make sure that those holes are all uh, filled. But really, the big idea was to have a balanced literacy approach that every student had decoding and coding practice vocabulary development, an excellent writing program, along with an, a, a, a developmentally appropriate reading component. All of them work together, and the things that you're talking about that aren't working with being a writer and reading street are absolutely true. It's hard to fit them in. So we do have, and we learned that from the teachers who piloted it, that it didn't work, as well as it works because uh, making meaning and being a writer are meant to be taught together. They make perfect sense. If you learn one, that following year when we have all that support. You're convincing I, me I'm right even more. <laughs> well, I'm, okay. Well, just, then. I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> I, I, I do I, understand. I just, <laughs> it's a shame. It is a shame that the, some students will have that experience. I, um, I, I, I understand I your point of view. Right. No, no, I understand. I mean, I was here with Reading Street that it was implemented, and it was overwhelming. And we were all over. I've worked in another district where there is a lot of turnkey staff training and the mood um, and the excitement was a little bit different when I saw new approaches being introduced in that district than it was when I was here in Penridge and they brought Reading Street out. And I see the value in, yes, you can have the professional staff come out from the company, but it's not the same as people that work in your district to know how things look actually in Penridge, explaining things to you and working through things. So I see the value and the importance of having internal training with our own teachers. Um, and, I, and I trust that you've thought through that. <laughs> and that you're never going to make everybody happy, and it's never going to be, you know, the best for every single teacher. They might, some might want it a different way. But I'm assuming, did you got you got some feedback on them as well? As you did. Would you? Want to do both all at the same time? Well, wouldn't be at the same time, it would still be different here. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back to a point that you made, though. You kind of you said it quickly um, because it was what I was going to ask. Um, how you're going to address the, for lack of a better word, the deficiencies?
deficiencies of the other program. So we can at least, you know, you, we want to accommodate the, the good rollout. We want it to be successful. But at the same time, if there are deficiencies there, I would like to think that we could address those somehow to at least give those kids that are missing out for the next one to two years. And that's a really good question. Remember that everyone's still getting being a writer, so that is valuable anyway. That is new, and they are, that's skill development that they're all getting. Even though we are using, read, continue to use Reading Street in the five schools, all teachers have been trained in text-dependent analysis, which is a skill that they needed to learn that is outside the scope of Reading Street. So we are all, we've already started to do that anyway. So all students would be doing that. We are addressing to the degree that makes sense and possible areas of, and I hate to say deficiency, well I guess I will say, because it is relatively deficient in terms of what the expectations are now in the state of Pennsylvania, right? So everybody had to up their game, and that particular program really doesn't fit that well. So you are right, but we have been doing that anyway. We've already started, we did that for the last few years on um, close reading, and, and if you're not familiar with that term, it, it just means that you're reading, students are, are taught to read different texts um, for different purposes. So you could reread a text, but you're reading it for a different purpose. What the state of Pennsylvania really wants students to be able to do is not answer these types of questions on the PSSA by just my personal experience. They want the text to be valuable and that you've read it deeply, you understand it deeply enough to make the connections to be able to do those responses. And how anyone feels about PSSAs, that is not a bad skill. That is a good skill that we should be developing with students. So over the past four years, we've been providing our teachers with professional development. And that's not excluding the other five schools. That's all seven schools. Is it a perfect fit? No, it isn't. And I'm here to tell you that it is. But the, to the degree and extent possible that makes no sense, all students will be getting those skills. They just won't be getting the um, kind of that um, really built on community feel as you see in, in uh, uh, to being a writer. But I don't want you to think that we're just gonna leave the five schools and they just have to do Reading Street. There's so <laughs> much more than that that happens now that will continue to happen. And there are really those big ideas. Text-dependent analysis just means I'm answering questions that are in the text. They're not just part of my past experience. It really does show that you have the ability to read deeply and, and uh, you can read complex texts and make connections. So please know all staff gets, all elementary staff has to read that. It isn't a perfect picture. I wish it was. It isn't, but I do believe, and, I, and we've had these conversations, that this is in the best interest of everyone. Because if you train the teachers properly, they feel comfortable, they feel respected, they feel you're giving them all the support that they need, that's going to make them understand